lip balm um, Summer Fridays brown sugar Very excited to have this because it keeps going out of stock So these are like less than $10 a lot of the time. So, and they're good. They, they last, I feel. I use the glue because that lasts a long time. Okay. Let's get into it because we have quite a few books to get through. So my TBR list or books that I plan on reading and have a long, long list of based on what I really want to kind of read next. So I'm actually in a place right now where I don't have anything I'm reading. And I think I'm going to start the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Moss. This is very popular. I mean, most people can know like about these books. Um, I have read the Akatar series, so I feel like I really wanted to get into this series next and the third book is actually coming out in a few days and I haven't read any of the books. I don't feel rushed to like try to read through the first two to get to the third one. I'm gonna like do what I need to do to get through these very chonky books. So the first book is House of Earth and Blood um, 
and yeah, I mean, I believe the main character is Bryce and like the world is more like contemporary fantasy, like a more urban setting, if that makes sense, or city setting, Crescent City, so the city is in there. Um, it's not as, I think, medieval as the other fantasy books she has written, like Throne of Glass series and Akatar. I actually did start Thro Throne of Glass a few years ago before Akatar, and I DNF'd it by like book four or five. I know. Look, I was not feeling it. I just was like in a place in my life where I just wasn't connecting with the characters and I was like not into it. Um, I just felt like Selena, Selena, Sardothian, whatever. Um, that character, I just like, I didn't really like her. <laughs> um, but I think I might revisit that series later in life. I just like DNF'd it and didn't like it. But I liked Akatar. Like, I enjoyed that. So I don't know. Maybe I'll enjoy Crescent City. I bought the first book, so I hope I do. big, big book. So, I also got the second book because I'm like anticipating that I'll like the series and I think maybe I should have just bought the first one so that I don't get my hopes up, but it's House of Sky and Breath. So, I mean, beautiful covers and I feel like a lot of people like it, so I am keeping it open gonna take me maybe a couple months and only because while I'm reading these I do want to read other books I am a tandem reader in the sense that like I like to read a lot of books at the same time uh, that can be a little problematic when I need to actually finish a book instead of like procrastinating so but these are really big so I feel like I can put in a couple smaller books to supplement you know really want to read the Bridgerton novel of romancing Mr. Bridgerton, Penelope and Colin's story. And I want to read this probably before the next season comes out because I with the first season of Bridgerton, like I watched it without what you know reading any of the books. I didn't know they were books actually. And then so I bought The Duke and I after watching season one and it took me forever to finish because I was bored. Like I, I just like knew what was going to happen in the book and had already seen the show and I liked the show a little better to be honest. So it was just like hard for me to get through it. So for this book, I think to avoid having it be difficult to read, I'm just going to try and read it first and then watch the show when it comes out and then Hopefully that'll be a better experience because I already feel like watching the show first, I'm, it's going to be harder for me to get through this. So, I don't know. That's my take. I think the next season comes out in like April, May, so I do want to try and get to this before then. And I feel like I could get through it pretty quickly. So I am a huge Bridgerton fan, and I really hope they bring back, like, the Bridgerton experience because I missed out on that, and, like, I regret it. I wish I could, like, do that. It's, like, this event that they would have in, like, LA and New York, etc., and I didn't go because I, like, didn't think about it a few years ago, so I'm hoping they bring back Bridgerton events again because I would love to go. I wish I had, like, a group of people kind of shared these books in my what I got for Christmas video a couple videos back but um I'll sh share them very quickly if you've already seen that um but What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez is another book I can't wait to read and I want to read it pretty soon um so probably this coming month in February it looks pretty manageable um it's basically 
basically like based in like Egypt and it's sort of supposed to remind you I guess the essence of like the mummy the movie but more book fantasy realm so I'm really excited about this this is definitely gonna be something I read sooner than later uh, the next couple books I want to read I've shared before but it's a wildfire and love theoretically I call these my smutty easy reads <laughs> And I feel like these are good, like, in-between books, like, kind of like if I read fantasy, I'll read one of these contemporary books to kind of give a little variety, change it up a little bit. Um, so yeah, uh, these will be kind of like those types of books, and I love Allie Hazelwood so much. I do feel like, um, she, she involves, like, story and plot as well as the romance in a way that, like, a lot of the times I feel like contemporary plots are kind of like stale for me because I'm like it's based on reality there's not like a lot of drama um, unless there is a lot of drama in which case it can be kind of depressing but um, and then we have Hannah Grace which who wrote Icebreaker that is definitely like the plot I mean I actually find the writing really funny I found I laughed a lot with Icebreaker, I enjoyed the romance, I enjoyed the characters a lot, and I am huge on character development and character emotion, like emotionally connecting to the characters. Um, I feel like that's really important for me when it comes to a book, regardless of like how much of the plot there really is, if that makes sense. So if I connect to the characters, I feel like plot doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> I kind of like don't really care as much, but yeah, these definitely feel like Valentine's Day books, so maybe I'll try to get through these in February, who knows, and in the more imminent future, I do feel like Fourth Wing and Iron Flame might be another few fantasy books I read, um, in comparison to Crescent City, this looks very easy to get through, so I do anticipate that I will get through this quickly, We'll see about Iron Flame. I heard that was a little harder for people. Like, it was just a little lengthier and slower. Um, but I think in the next couple months, I'll probably get to the series and I might get Iron Flame on my Kindle um, and see, or maybe rent it before I buy it. We'll see. The problem with libraries a lot of the time is like they'll only have so many digital versions for you to rent and physical copies. And it's just really awful because, you know, I mean, I grew up going to the library. I rarely bought books unless it was like for Christmas and I got a gift card. <laughs> so I grew up going to the library. I would go all the time. I would get always a lot of books. And now it's like a lot of the popular books sometimes are not available at the library, which totally sucks. So um, if I really want it, I'll buy it or I'll buy the Kindle version because now I have a brand new Kindle and books are a little cheaper digitally so I feel a little less guilty for buying a book if it's Kindle now and also because I'm running out of space on my bookshelves like there is really no more space in my place to add more physical books so now I'm being really cognizant of really every physical book I bring in um, and I think my current philosophy is maybe I'll just get the digital version or rent it if possible. And if I really love it, then I will buy the physical copy because then I'll know I'll have that forever. It sucks because I do love physical books a lot. However, this Kindle is so much fun. I feel like it's easily transportable wherever you go. The cover I got makes me feel like it's a book. So I think I'm like helping myself get in the zone with reading, despite it not being a physical book. So we're gonna switch over to my Kindle because there's a couple books in here that I want to read. Um, so the first one is Son of the Drowned Empire, which I don't know if it's a novella technically, I think it is like a novella, but I 
recently read all of the uh, Drowned Empire books by Frankie Diane Malice, I think. Mal Malice. Um, love that series so much. 10 out of 10. It's so good. The first book is Daughter of the Drowned Empire, and then it goes Guardian of the Drowned Empire. Then uh, there's a novella called Solstice of the Drowned Empire, which is technically like a required novella. Like you have to read that third because it gives spoilers in the next book and then would give spoilers to the previous book. So you have to read it third. Uh, and then the fourth book is Lady of the Drowned Empire, which returns to like the main story plotline. And Son of the Drowned Empire, the one I plan to read next, is like another novella, um, which is in the point of view of the love interest character, which I personally love. I think this writer does it a really good job of writing characters you emotionally connect to. Like, I feel for these characters. I feel like I want to jump through the book and, like, protect them, you know? And, like, I don't know. I just love that she's able to write these characters in a way that makes me feel, like, that connected to them. Um, and also just the story, the whole series, is a great balance of romance and plot. Very slow burn, very, but so worth it. Like, every individual book offers so much, and I feel like I can remember each book individually, and loved each book individually, so love this series. There is a sixth book coming out that returns to the main story, but it doesn't come out till June. I'm definitely going to read that one, and I think it's called Warrior of the Drowned Empire, if I'm not mistaken, but that is also on my to-read list. I will mention briefly that I downloaded a bunch of free books from Stuff Your Kindle Day after Christmas, so I have like 30 books in here that I can read at any given time. A lot of them are book ones of a series, though, so I'm trying to be very careful. <laughs> about what I select, because if I like something, I know I'm going to want to read the rest of the series, but it's so nice that there's options out there to, like, get free books and try out other authors, other indie authors, so I have a wealth of books, but I'm not going to go through that list because it's extensive, and, um, these other books are a little bit more higher up on my list. So on my Kindle, there are actually two additional books that I do think I want to read, more sooner than later. One of them is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. This one I downloaded because I heard really good things, but I feel like my genre preferences are not usually like contemporary drama. <laughs> I don't know if that's the word. I heard it was really good, so I feel like I have to be in a specific mood. I will say my mental health has been... It's been... <laughs> um, I think just because real life sometimes can feel so stressful or anxious. Um, not that I have a lot of, like, tragic things going on, but sometimes I feel overwhelmed by real life, that reading books based in real life with, like, real life situations makes me more depressed. So, actually, fantasy and romance really get me out of my own head a lot and are my preferences. Um, but I heard The Great Alone is a good book. I did start it, like, several months ago, but I was, like, on an airplane and I just ended up pausing it. Um, but I think I have to be in a certain mindset to go back to a book like this and I just don't think I'm there yet. But I know I want to finish it this year, so we'll see. Okay. And then the next book I heard was really good that I also got is Daughter of No Worlds. Um, I heard this was a really good book, so I really want to read it. And that's really all I have. I don't remember what it's about, but I'm sure. I think it's more like fantasy. All that good stuff. So um, I have not started it, but I would love to read it. And I just know, though, that all these books that are like books, books one, um, inevitably lead to other books. So it's like, 
sometimes I have to focus on just like getting through a series as quickly as possible so I can like move on to something else properly, you know. Next we have my Emily Henry books. <laughs> and I literally keep buying her books and like not reading them. Um, these have been on my bookshelf for a while, for several, several months. Almost a year for some of these and I realize I need to just stop buying her books until I read them but the thing is I bought these books and I feel like they're more summery like they're based in summertime so I feel like I need to like wait till the summertime to like get into the, into the mood so in a way I've saved myself some summer books which is nice but um It'll be an Emily Henry summer for me. So we have people we meet on vacation. And then we have Happy Place. And then we have Book Lovers. So we'll see if I can get to all of them this summer. But um, yeah, I feel like summer reads, I definitely like to read closer to summertime. Right now, I'm in my, like, cozy, deep fantasy and, like, perky romances. <laughs> Alright, I have more books behind me that I'll get into in a minute, but I wanted to go through my Goodreads want to read list because there's some that I have not bought or gotten yet that I do actually want to read more than those group of books. I know it's a lot of books, you guys, but... I wanted to share a few from my Goodreads, like, TBR list because there's some that I, that I would love to read sooner than later. So some of them on this list I've already, like, shared. Uh, but one of the books I want to read is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I heard that was really good. Um, I've seen it has high ratings, but heard that was really good and that is on my list. Um, let's see. Uh, there is, there are two more Allie Hazelwood books that I want to read. So one of them is Bride. I don't know if we can see. This one looks really interesting. It's like a dangerous alliance between a vampire bride and an alpha werewolf becomes a love deep enough to sink your teeth into in this new paranormal romance. I love that. I'm loving it already. So I have been seeing some TikToks about people liking this and I'm like, oh, love that. sign me up. Another Ali Hazelwood book I would like to is, um, it's called Checkmate, but I don't know if I want to read this as much as I want to read Bride. Um, it's apparently like a YA novel. You can't see it. I'm not sure why, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It's on my list. I'm just, it's not like high up on my list. I wish, I wish I could order my Goodreads TBR books by order of when I want to read them. Maybe I can do that. I just haven't figured it out. <laughs> so, I should probably figure that out. Okay. Um, I would love to read The Dark Olympus Book 3, Wicked Beauty. Um, that book. I've already read the first two books. I... Neon Gods was okay. Electric Idol, I liked that. I liked it a lot. Um, I feel like these books are really easy to read, so it's nice to like, I don't know, if you're in the mood kind of thing. This series I really want to read. So One Dark Window. Um, the One Dark Window series, the Shepherd King series, my bad. That one has gotten really good reviews. I and the series. Um, you guys, there's so many books. Like, I literally... 
was too many. I think based on all of this, like, I can already tell what books I'm really more leaning towards. Um, and I think I have an efficient strategy for getting through these books if I, like, prioritize, you know? <laughs> One of the books I really want to read is A Touch of Darkness. Um, oh, I didn't realize I could, like, zoom into it. <laughs> this is, like, another Hades Persephone story, which I'm all for. Like, yes, please. Um, so that is another one that I would love to read. All of these are series, okay? It's, it's gonna be a busy year for me, so. Ooh, okay, so Divine Rivals is another book that I've heard really good things about, or more or less people liked it. Um, would be great to read that this year. I'm not like, I'm not, I don't need to like read it right away, but like, it's on my list. Okay, and then there's a few more books that I'm pretty interested in. I heard they were really great. One of them is Spark of the Everflame, The Kindred's Curse Saga by Penn Cole. Um, a lot of people love this book, and yeah, I'm just, there's slow burn, enemies to love her, um, a fantasy romance, I mean, this has everything that I enjoy, so, yeah, fantasy romance is where it's at, okay? Fantasy in, like, another time or world, or, like, based on, like, works for me. Like, it doesn't need to be always, like, medieval fantasy. It works. Um, another book that had good reviews was Peaches and Honey, These Immortal Truths. Um, looks really good. A shape-shifting god, an immortality granting peach, and a woman gifted with Loving it. Another great recommendation is The Road of Bones, the Ashen series by Demi Winters. A woman on the run, a crew of Viking mercenaries, a forbidden romance, and the secret which threatens them all. Vikings. Hell yeah. Okay. I want to feel all the feels. I want to feel the feels, but I don't want to be, like, cr like, devastated. Like, that is, I need escapism, okay? Like, I want to be devastated for a reason. You know, like, a good ending that I can live with is what I, like, I'm hoping some of these are not devastating. <laughs> um, okay. I think for me, it's not even about the ending as much as, like, the characters can need to be somehow relatable to me, but, you know, it's subjective. Like, every book is going to relate to someone differently. And then the final one on my Goodreads list um, is The Blood That Binds Us, and that is by, it's the Bound by Blood series by Erin Menward, or Mainward, and it says, she is the wielder magic and she may end them all. Ren has never stolen a life, but that doesn't stop her from believing her darkness makes her a walking nightmare. Ooh, a blood witch. A war is looming. 18 plus dark romantic fantasy. Do I like dark romance? I think that's like something I have not... I don't have a ton of experience in, and nor do I, like, I'm not interested in, like, super weird, or not weird, I'm not interested in super, like, explicit is not a problem, it's just, like, the way it's explicit might be, um, like, I don't handle certain things very well, so 
Ooh, there's a complete list of content warnings available. Okay, great. I might have to go look at that, but um, I feel like a lot of authors dabble with dark romance and do it okay. I've heard some books just steer clear from those. So that's, that's what I'm going to continue doing. But I feel like dark romance, I feel like I don't necessarily want super dark. <laughs> you know, like, um, I don't want to feel scared reading it. <laughs> I'll return to the physical books left on my bookshelf that I still need to read. One of them I did actually start. Um, I might finish this sooner than later, I don't know, but these books I have next to me are really like, I might read them whenever this year. Um, there's really, I'm not like super leaning towards them versus the other books that I just shared. So um, I'll kind of read them whenever I feel like it is kind of the point. So this book is Princess Academy. And yes, it looks like a very childish book because it's technically like a YA book. So this book is probably good for, you know, maybe middle school, high school. I mean, the character is basically a teenager. Like, she's like 16 years old. Um, but the first book in this series, because this is the third one, it's Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. Shannon Hale. Shannon Hale. Amazing writer. She wrote Goose Girl, one of my all-time favorite books, 100%. Absolutely read it. Um, Goose Girl, and they're, they're called the Books of Bayern. Um, they're like YA books, so it's The Goose Girl and a Burning River Secrets and Forestborn. Um, the Goose Girl being, each book is based on a different character story, but it's like the same group of characters. Um, but The Goose Girl is so good. But she also wrote the Princess Academy book, which became a series. I, I'm gonna say it, I hate these covers, these new covers that look so, like I just feel like it doesn't represent the writing and the stories that these books are. I just feel like it's giving 12 year old, but like in not a good way, I don't know. The original cover art of the Princess Academy book, when I was like 13, read that book. It was so minimal, not like minimal, but like illustrative and beautiful. It just felt like a beautiful book. And then they re- they kept, she kept writing the books and for some reason the next two books look like this. Ugly. I'm sorry, but like where is the beautiful cover that she originally came out with? Like that art was so beautiful. I know they have to market this to children, but like, I don't know, as a kid, I, like, this wasn't attractive to me. When I was 13, these types of covers were just like not my jam, and I was attracted to that, I don't know, I could rant about cover art, <laughs> but I just, I'm like, this is not it, you guys. I feel like this is like doing a disservice to her because she's actually a really great Maybe she chose this. I don't know. Sorry, Shannon, but like, I'm just not a fan. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. This is personal, my personal opinion. Whatever. Anyways, it's the third book in the series, and I want to read all of them because I loved the first book, but I feel like because I'm a lot older now, it's a little harder for me to, like, tap back into, like, she's a teenager and she's, you know, doing her YA story and great writing and I do enjoy Shannon Hale's books a lot so I'm gonna stick to it eventually read this. The next two books I have are a book three and four of the series Dune which if you've seen books I've read recently video I talked about reading the first two books and my complicated feelings about them. Um, basically <laughs> I bought all the books that, you know, I loved the series and I was going to want to read all of them. This is why I really need to just buy the first
this book because I quickly realized after book two I might end up DNFing the series. I, I might just keep them and eventually read them and then if I really don't like any of them I'll give them away. I bought these used so they weren't like incredibly expensive. It's a long story so if you want to know more about my thoughts and feelings on this series you can go see that video of what I recently read um, but if you know you know that it's complicated for me and um, it's basically like Outlander but like YA and very PG. It's there's no spice. It's very it's a classic YA series and I did like the first book. Second book took a turn um, and so now I just don't know how I feel about continuing to read the series. I feel right now. So they're kind of floating in my maybe list. Okay. So, another book on my shelf that I still need to read. Now, to be fair, I have watched the show Daisy Jones and the Six and loved it. Loved it. Um, so I bought the book because I was like, I gotta have a book. Love Taylor Jenkins Reid. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is probably one of my all time favorite books. I loved Malibu Rising. I loved um, the Evelyn Hugo book. So I feel like Taylor Jenkins Reid writes in a way that I do really connect with. So I didn't have any problem picking this up after I saw the show. But because I know it's gonna happen, I feel like it's like, what's the What's the rush in reading it? So this is why it probably is always good to read the book before the show or movie because you may not want to read the book after. Um, but yeah, I got this at Target, so it wasn't too crazy. Um, and I'm still glad I have it in my collection because I really love the story. At least the Amazon TV show. <laughs> See if I like the book eventually when I get to it. The other Taylor Jenkins Reid book I do want to read is Carrie Soto is Back. Um, I, I have that on my also to read list. A lot of these are like the same author, other books type of thing. If I end up liking the author, I tend to like their other books often, not all the time, but often. So the last two physical books I have on my shelf to read. Six of Crows. I know. I'm very late to the game on this one. Um, I actually have had these books for a couple of years and I haven't read them. So they are the Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. They're a dual book series, so there's only two. The thing is, I asked for these books for Christmas one year and I got them and I was so going to read them. And then I realized there's a whole other series of books tied to this world that I might need to read first. And I haven't read that series yet. I don't actually know what order these books go in, but it's the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Technically, it's the same universe. And I heard somewhere that you're supposed to read those books first, technically. Um, I might Google this because I don't know anymore. <laughs> I just want to read these books sitting on my shelf for forever and I have not read it because I feel like if I read it without reading the other books in the uh, Shadow and Bone series that I'm going to end up ruining the experience for myself. So I eventually will read this but I might read the Shadow and Bone trilogy which is also like another three books and I just feel like there's so many books you guys. There's so many. I love that we are all able to share so much more and let me tell you I have been an avid reader since I was basically born and um, I mean I'm the kind of girl that would go to the library and get like 30 books literally like chapter books because I just read a book every day in the summer you know when I was a kid like that was just what I would do and I feel like when I got older it was getting really tough to be like okay what books, you know, I like these kind of books. How do I find more of these kind of books instead of like kind of getting through a lot of books that I didn't enjoy? And I 
I feel like with social media and technology, we're able to get so niche with our recommendations. I mean, it's amazing. And I love that I feel like there's so many amazing books that I can read now instead of it being like such a struggle to find books with like what we're looking for. Uh, I think TikTok has made that super accessible for people. And I think right now I'm trying to make sure that I sift through the recommendations based on what I know I enjoy and do my research a little bit more. There's some creators, influencers, people that recommend books a lot and I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I'll like that book too. And then I quickly realize that they just like different types of books that I do. Um, and there's some popular books that I feel like, you know, Iron Flame, Crescent City, you know, Six of Crows, like a lot of these books a lot of people have read and liked. Emily Henry books, like a lot of these are but I feel like it's in a way easy to tell that those books I can drive to instead of like some books. I don't know. I feel like I'm too trusting sometimes of recommendations and then I end up being disappointed. Um, so I steer clear now from I think the more, I don't know, the genres that I know I'm not going to like do well with. Um, and I'm just going to stick to the ones that I know I really enjoy, um, although I'm still open and we'll see what other books come out that are enjoyable. Let me know what books you're excited to read if you've made it this far, but that pretty much concludes my TBR book, book list. I mean, a lot of it is familiar. fast reader, so I don't know how far I'm going to get, <laughs> but I do know that I'm going to keep reading while I, while I can, and read as much as I possibly can with what I have available to me, so don't ever feel pressure to, like, read a million books, because, like, at the end of the day, it's about enjoying what you read, not necessarily how much you read. the video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you get to read the books you enjoy this year and I wish you